right, guys, this is Super Tie. I'm joined with comic book Brando. Hey, bud. Hi. And we're going to be talking about all the cool books that are coming out tomorrow, November 8th, uh, first thing in the morning. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Yeah. yeah. Right in the morning. As usual, if you guys have any questions, comments, you want to tell us what books you're really stoked about, and, you know, things like that, we'll uh, be more than happy to answer as best as we can. In real time. Just, Just comment below. Yeah. So, uh, while you're setting that up, I'm going to start with one that I have been waiting for for a long time. This is the new slash legacy of Moon Knight. So, I'm a huge Moon Knight fan, have been for a very, very long time. And this is also going to be written by a guy named Max Bemis, who is slowly becoming, not slowly, actually quickly becoming one of my favorite writers in comics right now. He's doing a lot of indie stuff, he's doing like the Centipede book, he also did... Uh, what was it? X-Men Worst X-Men Ever and the Fool Killer book for Marvel. So I really dig his stuff. Like he's a really awesome writer, so I can't wait to see what happens in this issue. I only did a cursory glance because I want to be surprised by everything. So you should be definitely checking this out. There's a very cool lenticular cover that's an homage to uh, Bill Sinkevich. Is that how you say his name? I believe so. Okay, cool. For the longest time I thought it was Sinkowitz. I always pronounce it Sinkowitz. But... Yeah. Sinkevich. Sinkevich. So, uh, this is like my number one pick for the week. You should definitely pick this up tomorrow. Angel says, Sup, fellas. Hey, Angel. How you been, man? Sup, my friend. Batman Lost. Batman is lost in the dark multiverse. That's a bad place to be. Mm -hmm. And from this issue, I can tell you he's not having a great time. Uh, you're getting to review some things from his past getting some answers to questions you didn't know you had uh, things about the bats the birds no bees we've got uh, all sorts of intense things happening and he's just trying to find his way out mm -hmm. will that happen find out in this metal crossover uh, Patrick says what up gents what up Patrick? well hello Patrick action comics number 991 this is the conclusion of the Oz effect so Wow, there's a lot of crazy, crazy happenstance happening in this. Uh, so, I, it, can I tell him who Mr. Oz is? I mean, it's been like four weeks. I think at this point, spoiler warning. Yeah, spoiler warning. So, Jor-El is Mr. Oz, and he's trying to save Superman and Lois and John from a corrupt Earth, you know, because Earth is just, in Jor-El's mind, just beyond redemption. Nothing can be fixed anymore. But without spoiling anything the next big Superman crossover if you know what I'm talking about is set up in this a whole lot oh. yeah so oh, there's a lot of emotions in this one a lot of father-son like deep talk happening I guess is the best way to put it so as I've been saying forever all the Superman books are great this one is a fitting conclusion to an awesome story arc. Yeah. Jessica Jones number 14 when last we saw our troubled heroine, uh, she had her daughter uh, hidden away because the purple man was loose. Mm. Well, the purple man was now speaking through his daughter. Uh, that's where we start with this issue, and Jessica just doesn't know what to do. She's freaking out. Uh, can her friends help her? Does she even want her friends to help her? This is a tough situation with a very sinister villain. If you're a fan of the the Netflix show, or if you love the original Alias comics, this is an awesome book. Even if you're new to Jessica Jones, you can be picking up this story arc and uh, and really diving into it. Nice. So, I was thinking a while back about mind control villains. Uh, was it the Mandrel that could only control women? Yep. Yeah, but he was like a big baboon guy, right? With his pheromones. Yeah, with his pheromones. Okay, I was... I was just making sure that it was the mandrel. About the only villain creepier than Purple Man. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, oh, well, the big monkey man controls just women. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My next one is the legacy numbering of She-Hulk. This is issue 159. This is the beginning of Jen Walters Must Die, the story arc. So, Jen is, you know, doing her thing. You know, last issue was actually kind of lighthearted, and, you know, she went on, like, a blind date, and it obviously did not go well because the dude was kind of a jackass and so she's just doing her own thing she meets somebody for lunch that just kind of wants to interview her and then her cell phone gets stolen and who's familiar with Samuel Stearns I know Samuel Stearns. you know Samuel Stearns so uh, if you guys know who Samuel Stearns is and even if you don't you've seen him before I'm not gonna say who it is or should I it doesn't really matter 
Uh, I mean, they could do the research. Yeah. So, uh, so Samuel Stearns is back, a uh, classic Hulk character. So, man, Mariko Tamaki, I want to make sure I'm saying the re name right. Yes, Tamaki is killing it in this. I've always been a fan of She-Hulk, especially the metafiction stuff where she's, you know, talking to John Byrne, you know, criticizing him for the quality of her villains. But this is like a different take, and it's, you know, meaner. It's angrier. I like it. I don't think I would do super villainy stuff if I, like, had She-Hulk's cell phone. I yeah. think I'd be, like, crank-calling Wonder Man. That'd be fun. Or, like... Uh, Man-Wolf. Man-Wolf, yeah. <laughs> hey, Juggernaut, is yeah. it true? Yeah. So, um... <coughs> but, yeah, Sam Stearns, he's back, and it's very cool. Yeah. I'm very stoked about it. The Wonderful World of Tank Girl. This is a four-issue series, and each issue is a standalone story. This one's called Tank Girl Strikes Again. Uh, the team has a crazy mission to go on that's going to pay off well, except things go really badly because Booga doesn't know how to plan. Nope. Uh, the original Punk Rock Riot Girl comic book is back and is awesome, and I love that uh, they're spending so much... Uh, you know, time and dedication to keeping this series around because I mean, there's like a long period of time where we got nothing for Tank Girl, but yeah, been like a lot of new series recently. If you're a fan of the character or the crazy world, uh, it's been a real enjoyable ride. I recommend it. Nice, she's the girl you want. Thank you, Diva. <laughs> I don't know. Well, <laughs> she's pretty. She's you remember pretty the movie, crazy. you remember the movie, and that was like the opening track and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Diva. My next, Fair. my next one is. Are we not men? <laughs> we are. No, we're not. We are Devo. <laughs> uh, a quick little factoid: uh, the lead singer of Devo, Mark Mothersbaugh, did the score for Thor. I mean, Ragnarok. He's done a ton of scores, but yeah, that was a uh, pretty. Seeing his name in the the credits is like, oh. Yeah, I was just like, right on. Well, that will certainly go with the neon color uh, atmosphere. Oh yeah, I thought it was quite fitting. Yes, let's pause for a moment to say Thor Ragnarok is yeah, awesome. Yeah, it was great. I saw it yesterday. It was, oof, it was awesome. I was laughing my butt off. It's quite good. Speaking of butts, Hulk butt shows up. <laughs> Fact. <laughs> Fact. Spoilers. So, um, next one for me is Marvel Legacy Daredevil, number 595. This is the beginning of the story arc, Mayor Fisk. Uh-oh, so... You know, New York's had a couple of crazy mayors over the past, you know, <laughs> couple of decades in Marvel. You know, there's J. Jonah Jameson. Now it's Wilson Fisk. And, of course, Daredevil does not cotton to that. So, uh, how is he gonna... How is he gonna get the Kingpin now when the Kingpin's actually in charge? You know, Darede uh, Matt Murdock, he works for the DA's office, which is run by the mayor's office. So, uh, how are things gonna happen? This is another one that I only did a cursory glance of because I've been loving Charles Soule's um, Daredevil series, so really want to see what happens in this. There's a good reference to uh, Mayor Fisk in the Jessica Jones comic. Oh, well. cool. Yeah. Mr. Miracle number four. Scott Free is on trial from Orion and the New Gods for being a, a anti-life equation traitor. Hmm. Where do you have an intense dramatic trial like that you have it in your living room excellent get the veggie tray big barda <laughs> we have a trial this is an awesome issue from an awesome series i've been loving it it's crazy it's introspective it's bizarre i don't know what's coming in in the future issues but man it's so good so fourth issue get on board if you haven't been like when Vision was coming out, we were telling everyone to read it. Just like that, you should be reading Mr. Miracle. Yes. My next one. Oh, Angel said something? Excellent history. Oh, yes. A different angel. Oh, really? Oh. It says Mr. Miracle rules. It does rule. It is probably the best DC book, in my opinion, going on right now. Because it's just so crazy. Best is a tough, tough thing to quantify. I, best for me right now. I do love Mr. Miracle. Yeah. There's plenty of other great DC books going on right now, but that one just hits all, you know, the it hits the crazy factor for me, it's the weird factor, it hits the art factor, because the artist of that book is just awesome. Yeah. Uh, the covers are always great, the writing is solid, uh, it delves into the history of the New Gods, but also makes it its own kind of thing, so, I mean, for me, that's, that's why it's one of the best. It's certainly one of the best. 
Spirits of Vengeance number two, The War at the Gates of Hell. So, in case you can't tell, Ghost Rider, Blade, Damon Hellstrom, and Satana are all uh, trying to figure out. There's this, there's a silver bullet that's circulating around the, the you know, not the astral plane, the, the mortal plane, I guess, that is being sought after by demons, by angels, and for some reason, somebody just gave it to Johnny Blaze, and he's trying to figure out what's going on with it. Uh, I'm a huge fan of all these characters. I mean, Ghost Rider has always been, like, solid. Uh, Blade always has a great story arc uh, when, you know, people are writing him really well, and you never get to see him do that much of a team book. Never. Yeah, so that's really cool. I love uh, Son of Satan, Damon Hellstrom. I never got to read too much of Satana stuff, though. She was in a lot of the black and white magazines. Yeah. She's a... Uh... She's pretty cool. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's it's a good, like, supernatural book. Marvel used to do a ton of these, and I want them to get back to it. And... She was really good in... What was the book that Luke Cage was... Was it a Defenders book? It was a team book that had her, Luke Cage, Man-Thing. It was, it was really weird and awesome. Was it the Thunderbolts book where Luke Cage was in yeah, charge of that? Yeah, it was Thunderbolts. That's yeah, it was Thunderbolts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's where she was probably used most prominently recently. I just hope that silver bullet doesn't end up in old Jack Russell. Oh, better not. So that's another thing. They need to be making more Werewolf by Night books. <laughs> just saying. Master of Kung Fu, number 126. One of one. So this is a one shot. This is a, in line with those others that have been a long sort of finished series that they wanted to do legacy issues of. This is written by former wrestler CM Punk. And it's a, a day off for Shang-Chi, the master of Kung Fu. He and his monkey friend are going to go get themselves an ice cream. All right. I'm sure no ninjas will ruin that plan and mess up his day off. Mm. Or maybe they will. Uh, this is an awesome read. I love seeing Shang-Chi and stuff, and we would hope to see some more. So pick up this issue, and then maybe we can see some more Shang-Chi, master of Kung Fu. My next one is Ragman number two. I was really stoked about issue one, and I was very impressed by it. It's a different take on the character, different take on the mythos, just a little bit. It's, it holds the main parts, but it like really just kind of like updates a whole lot of things. Uh, so basically, Ragman is a vet, a veteran. Uh, I've been saying that a lot, like clarifying if it's a veterinarian or a veteran. So he's a veteran, and he discovered these like piles of rags in this like ancient forgotten tomb and now all these I guess demons is the best way to put it you're not really sure what they are are all after those ceremonial rags mm. this issue is actually pretty much an all-out fight issue like there's just tons of fighting all over and ragman's kind of getting control you know learning the learning the ropes learning the rags one would say so, so uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan of this. I, one thing I'm really digging that DC's been doing a whole lot is they've been grabbing some more of their, like, more forgotten or, you know, lower tier characters and giving them series. You know, there's a new Dead Man that came out. There's a, uh, there's going to be a new Mr. Terrific book with Plastic Man yeah, and Metamorpho. Awesome. I'm really stoked about that one. That would be fun. And uh, so, like, that's one thing that I'm digging about DC right now is they're really, like, you know, digging deep. Yeah. Do they call him the Tattered Amelia? No, uh, at one point that happens in issue one, but oh. the guy's like, what? Oh. So, who? Yeah. Nice. Detective Comics 968. All right, so things are pretty shaky in this, uh, in this series. Batman is from the future, is, is, is in the present from the future. This Batman is Tim Drake, and he is there to take out Batwoman, like to kill her. Hmm. Uh, to prevent some of the terrible things that are going to happen apparently shortly. Uh, it might require the entire Bat team to stop him because he's really good at being Batman. Uh, so give this one a look. This is crazy. Uh, it, there's ramifications and so I don't know what's going to happen with some of these characters in the coming months. But uh, I really am intrigued to find out. This whole, uh, I don't know what his name is, is it? Swipe of the old storyline. A Lonely Place of Living is the yeah. storyline. I had to remember that. Uh, this is the final part of it, and it will leave you with questions. My next one is Port of Earth by Zach Kaplan. Uh, I'm a huge fan of smart sci-fi. I'm also a fan of like wacky dumb sci-fi as well, but this is a very smart sci-fi. Give me some wacky dumb sci-fi. Some wacky dumb sci-fi is like 
Aftermath, the big clean. Do you remember that book? It was like very Simon Bisley type art, uh, where it was just like yeah. this whole city is actually an amusement park. Uh, what else? Sweetness was really fun, where sugar is the most valuable thing in all of the universe because we're the only planet that has it. So was that a comic? Yeah, I missed that. Yeah, that one's really good. Um, space scoundrels. Uh, space Riders, like those are wacky, fun sci-fi books, you know. But this one, it actually gets into a little more science of science fiction. Mm -hmm. So basically, the premise is we're contacted by aliens, and they want to set up like a little spaceport, you know, for Earth as like a way station, you know, for people on big intergalactic trips. Uh, there's rules though, like we can't interact with the aliens at all. Mm -hmm. Like we're not allowed to. And so maybe that's one of the big plot points is like, why? Why can't we? Uh, and um, man, it gets deep. There's a lot of, there's a lot packed into this issue. And it, one thing that I thought was really cool is they have like an index of like all the different types of aliens that we've encountered so far. So I thought that was really cool. Um, man, I don't want to spoil anything else because this was genuinely like a very solid first issue. Uh, it's written by the guy who did, um, her, not Horizon, um, Eclipse. Who does the art in there? Uh, it is Andrea Muti. I really like the style. Yeah, it's really awesome. Like, here, let me see if I can get a good picture for them to take, to see. It's like a little bit Frank Quietly-esque, but not derivative. Yeah, but like, you know, the artwork's very solid in it. And so this might be a new Thai mainstay, main, mainstay, because I can't talk. Patrick would like you all to know that you can share your opinions and thoughts about all these great comics and other comics you've read on the ABC website message board. Yeah, we just started that. Yeah, we yeah. built that and it's on the austinbooks.com. You can go on there and create an account and share opinions yeah. and thoughts and discuss and what have you. Now, Patrick, I was going to mention that at the end of the thing, but you know, it's cool. We'll throw it out in the middle right there for yeah, you. Yeah, there you go, buddy. at the end, too. I, I hope New York is treating you well. The state, not the city. You hope the city is treating him badly? Well, he's not living in New York City. I know. Oh. But it's, yeah, so I also weird. wish that. I hope the state is treating you well. I hope the city's stepping on you. <laughs> Slots number two. Man, do I love a good caper comic. Yeah. And this is definitely that. Uh, so Stan's back in town. Town is Vegas. Stan's a former boxer, and he's got a plan. I'm not really sure what that plan is, but it involves old business partners, old lovers, uh, getting into a fight, and there's going to be uh, um, he's lighting himself a, a match on the same card as his son, his estranged son. Yeah. Also, boxing, of, boxing match. Well, maybe. There's more stuff going on in this oh. one. They, they, they mentioned it's a, it's a peculiar kind of match, or, or at least a series of matches mm. that are not just boxing. Oh, okay. Because his son is a bit more MMA. Oh, okay. Uh, this is awesome. I really love these, like, caper books. The art is great. It's frenetic. And, you're, you know, every character, like, looks uniquely themselves, so you don't have too much trouble following who's who. You got some flashbacks. You got some gritty secrets. Awesome. Dan Padosian knocking it out of the park with this new series. My next one is uh, image number one. It's called Coyotes. Uh, this is by Sean Lewis and Caitlin Yarks Yarsky. I'm sorry, I'm reading it upside down. Yarsky. So this is really hard to describe. It's about a little girl with some swords and she is fighting coyotes, like the actual animal that are like just eating up people all over this town called the City of Lost Girls. Now, are the coyotes a metaphor? I'm not sure, because it gets like really weird and kind of psychedelic a little bit. Uh, I was fascinating, but fascinated by the entire you know book I was reading. So it's kind of like, is it a supernatural book? Is it all in this girl's head? Who, who knows? So uh, I like a book that makes me think a little bit too much. So this did it. You maybe noticed that uh, her flowers are arranged almost as if they were a red hood. Oh, ooh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that looks awesome. I was really curious about that based on the solicitation. That looks yeah. really good. Yeah, and the last page is kind of a doozy, so. Yeah, give yeah. That, uh, pick that one up. I will be. Despicable Deadpool number 289. That's right, Deadpool is sent by Strife to kill Cable. It's a job he has to get done, but he's not really getting it done. So maybe they can perhaps find another way to to get out of this. Mm -hmm. Maybe they can find Strife himself and uh, 
uh, end things a little prematurely. You may have noticed there's a dinosaur on the cover. Uh, when you have time traveling, these kinds of things happen. Uh, this is a wild, insane issue. I loved every page. You were of this. chuckling the whole time you were reading it. Yeah, I was. I was. I was laughing a bit. Uh, these two characters together, always funny. Uh, especially funny when when they're at odds. And then there's a third person involved, and there's wisecracks, and there's insanity, lots of insanity. So, yes, get on board Despicable Deadpool. It's the most fun this book has been, I mean, under Gary Dugan in a long time. So, there you go. My last regular single issue is Kid Lobotomy number two. So, the first issue was Ty's catchphrase bananas. Bananas. So, basically. And bear in mind, Peter Milligan gets out there a little bit. Basically, it's about this hotel where people with brain damage and also like some deep, you know, mental trauma go to get fixed by Kid Lobotomy using questionable methods is the best way to put it. And you get to see some more of those questionable methods in here. But somebody's out to kill the kid and you don't know why. So uh, I really dig it. If you're a fan of like old school Grant Morrison Vertigo stuff or old school Peter Milligan Vertigo stuff, this is very much up your alley. Uh, man, it was pretty darn weird, and that's why I liked it. There's also a lot of allusions to the Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka happening in here. So uh, read some classics, and then read that, and then this might make some sense. If you like some mind-bending comics, yeah, uh, it doesn't get any better than uh, edited by Shelley Bond. Yeah, this is awesome. So. Very cool. Looking forward to more from that Black Crown label. From yeah. BW. Wonder Woman number 700. Did you know that Diana has a twin brother? She meets him in this here issue. Uh, there's uh, some backstory, some reasons, uh, and it's a good thing she's meeting this guy because someone, sure, uh, someone is targeting the, the sons and daughters of Zeus and murdering them, as we saw in a previous episode. So find out more about that, find out more about Diana's brother, and, uh, and see what's going on in this uh, story arc. Oh, man. Oh, and then they show up. Okay. Yep. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yep. Interesting. So I'm moving on to trades right now. Titans, the Lazarus Contract. Uh, I wanted to read this when the single issues were coming out, but we kept selling out of it. So now I finally get to read it. Uh, so... Everybody's familiar with the Judas Contract, I hope. So this is the Lazarus Contract. So Wally West, the original Wally West, uh, came back at the beginning of Rebirth, uh, imbued with the Speed Force, as flashes are. Uh, Deathstroke notices this, and he has it in his noggin that the Speed Force can bring back his son. Uh, yeah, Jericho. So, I was going to say, which one? Yeah, sorry, Jericho. Just uh, Jericho. I didn't like the other one that much. So this is like a big time travel book also. Like the Titans from the past, future, present. They're all kind of involved in here. Deathstroke's involved. Teen Titans show up. Uh, so very bombastic storyline. Uh, it's in a very nice hardcover book. So I've noticed for the crossover books that DC does, those are in hardcover at first, and then they go to softcover, and then all the regular main series, those are softcover, and then, you know, they'll be collected later on in bigger covers. I just realized that today. So, yeah, I really want to read this because, you know, solid teams, solid writers, solid artists, uh, man. Marvel does the same thing. Their big storylines come out hardcover first. How have I been missing this this entire time? I swear I'm a professional, guys. <laughs> Heavy Metal, The Weird Issue. Check out that sweet Frank Frazetta Death Dealer cover. That thing's so classic. Uh, there's a little feature about Frank Frazetta as written by his son, Frank Frazetta Jr. There's also great stories from, uh, you know, heavy metal classics, like Kevin Eastman and Simon Bisley do a story. Cool. And there's a, I will never get his name right, Bilal Enrico? Enki Bilal? Uh, yeah, Grant Morrison stories, of course. Uh, Richard Corbin story. There's some classic. Yeah, I heard Richard Corbin you. was coming back. Yeah. So that's cool. He's in there. So nice. pick up the new issue of Heavy Metal if you like adult fantasy. 
My next one is Injustice 2, Volume 1. This is the first six issues of the sequel series, I guess is the best way to put it. So, I'm not gonna lie. When I first heard about the Injustice comics, I was like, ah, video game adaptations, whatever. And then I read the first, you know, the first series all the way through. It is spectacular. Like, this is a very solid DC series. So it's good throughout the entire time. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with this, uh, something happens, Superman goes crazy, takes over the world. Who's gonna fight him? Batman. And then everybody starts picking sides. And there's a lot of surprises on who's with who. And, um, like, for example, well, I'm not gonna say for example because I don't wanna spoil anything, even though it's been going on for like five years. Hmm. Uh, honestly, this is spectacular. Like, it, any of the Injustice books are great. It really helps to start at the beginning, but, you know, I was uh, flipping through this one, and it's very accessible. So, definitely, if you are if you like Elseworlds, that's what this is. It's like a giant Elseworlds series. That's the best way I could put it, because I love me some Elseworlds. So, yeah, uh, Injustice 2. And, a uh, little factoid, in the video game Injustice 2, Hellboy is one of the downloadable characters. Really? Yeah. Like, don't know how they got that ha to happen, but yeah, mm. he's like one of the DLCs. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's some video game magic there. Batgirl Volume 2. So Batgirl's been off on an adventure. He comes back to Burnside to find the place completely changed. Who's behind these changes? Who's who's fixing up this, uh, this town? Why, it's none other than Ethan Cobblepot. That's right, Cobblepot. He is the... Uh, long lost, illegitimate, or what's the word they used to describe it? Lost uh, egg. Uh, uh. <laughs> Sorry, that was bad. Continue, my friend. The estranged son of. I almost said Chester Copperpot. <laughs> no, no, that's not the right guy. Oswald Copperpot. Uh, the penguin. So yes, the son of penguin. Uh, what is uh, what is his goals and is. That girl falling for this somewhat attractive heroic guy. All right, find out. Spider-Man Miles Morales, Volume Three. A lot happens in this uh, this little story arc. And, uh, you know, he travels to Tokyo. He's fighting Hammerhead. He's you know his friends are getting in trouble. Uh, Gold Balls, which was probably my favorite X-Men character of the past couple of years because uh, he's ridiculous as. Certain X-Men need to be ridiculous, in my opinion. Anyways, this series, uh, this is, I'm not gonna lie, my favorite Spider-Man series going on right now, just because it's very, it much in the tradition of old school Spider-Man. Like, just this kid trying to get a grasp of everything. You said, know. you know what else is in the tradition of old school Spider-Man? Old school Spider-Man. Old school Spider-Man. Spider so, uh... I don't know. I've been digging this a whole lot. It's uh, just, you know, this kid, he's just trying his best to, you know, be a good superhero. Uh, keeping secrets from parents and family and all, and friends and all that stuff. So, I've been digging a whole lot. How about that Brian Michael Bendis news? Yeah! Big news. Yeah, if you guys aren't familiar, Brian Michael Bendis just signed an exclusive with DC. Which, I'm like, wondering. Multi-year. Yeah, multi multifaceted. Yeah. Said. So, I want to know, like, what happened? Like, Amicable, or will he be involved with the movies? Yeah, I don't know. That's really intriguing, very fascinating. I mean, I've sort of gotten the feeling that he's been wanting to write DC characters for a while, mm -hmm. and uh, now he has the chance because yeah. he's never really had. No, he's like pretty much straight from his indie, indie stuff from indie to, to Marvel, yeah, like exclusive for many years. And there are very few creators of the past. I don't know, 30 years that have shaped that yeah. uh, company as much as Bendis has. He's been like the main architect pretty much for, you know. At least for a long while. Yeah. So, should be interesting to see how that pans out. We'll yeah. see what's going on. Jose says, shout out from Houston. Oh, H-Town. Yeah. Yeah. We've been there. I've seen it on maps. No, I've been there many times. <laughs> it's like, have you never? No, I've been there. Uh, well, spoilers. What are some of the most important Batman stories of all time? You got Dark Knight Returns, Year One, Death of the Family, or Death in the Family, Long Halloween. Yeah, uh, there's also what else? Uh, Nightfall. Yeah, eh. eh. <laughs> it's it's important. It's so many issues. So. I just don't like it. But Batman Hush is awesome, and also one of those important Batman storylines. This is the 
15th anniversary for this classic storyline by uh, Jeff Loeb and Jim Lee. And they're now doing a beautiful hardcover edition with awesome new art featuring Batman and Catwoman. Uh, there's also uh, included in here sketches, character designs, altered art, and annotations from Jim Lee. Plus it includes the Hush interlude from Wizard Zero. Yeah. So if you don't have this yet, and even if you do have it, you need this nice new edition of it because this is a great storyline, kept us guessing, uh, lots of surprises, lots of uh, uh, intrigue, and you get to see Jim Lee draw pretty much every cool Batman villain. Exactly. So, there you go. So, <laughs> what? Jennifer says, that Brandon is a classy gent. I hear he's really good at Burger Time. I am fantastic at the classic arcade game Burger Time, although she has gotten better than me. Okay, what are y'all's, uh, Jose is asking, what are y'all's thoughts about the news of Disney by the rights of Fox with Spider-Man and all the X-Men universe? I am not sure, did that actually happen? I, I remember that, reading it yesterday. I think that fell through. I don't think that's actually happening. I mean, I think it would be. I'm mixed. I'm mixed on it if it happens. I mean, I never like to see companies get bigger, mm -hmm. but for them to, you know, just have, for Marvel to have the rights to X-Men and Fantastic Four, that would have been awesome. Yeah. I probably would have dealt with Disney being... I actually, I mean, Disney as a company, I don't mind them so much. They well, pretty much own my life. Well, but it, one reason I was kind of, like, hesitant on it is if, like, you know, if Disney eventually acquires Fox, then we wouldn't have movies like Deadpool because they don't want to make rated R superhero movies. I mean, they have to be able to see that that works. I mean, Disney owned Miramax or... Yeah. They they do make R rated movies under their umbrella. Yeah. So I think they just have to like sort of separate that. But I I don't know. I if if it if it cost us good Deadpool movies and good movies like Logan, then I wouldn't want it to happen. Right. Uh, but boy, it sure would be nice to see a good Fantastic Four movie. Yep. It would be cool to see uh just like at the end of Infinity War, you know, like the Blackbird shows up. And just like, <laughs> and they're just like, oh, hey guys, what's up? I like, ah! would not want to see the X-Men, and I just don't like X-Men in space. Always hated it, never liked it. What? Oh, man. I hate it. Oh. X-Men in space drives me nuts. Okay. Just don't like it. Respectfully disagree. I mean, the first couple times with the Star Jammers, sure, fine. Of course, he's got, like, Phoenix Saga stuff happening. Right. But any time after that, just don't do it. I was a big fan of Rise and Fall of the Shi'ar Empire. Like, that Ed Brubaker storyline, I thought that was very solid. I just never cared about the Shi'ar. That's cool. Let's go. I just didn't care about Vulcan. Just wasn't into it. I got you. But right. I love Ed Brubaker. Everything he writes. I, so I was, that's why I was a little disappointed when, like, first thing, I was like, oh, they're in space. <laughs> But speaking of space, <laughs> segue. Good segue. Thank you. Uh, Trillium. This is how I actually got into Jeff Lemire writing. I, uh, I just gave this one a shot out of nowhere. Uh, he also does the art in this. Basic premise of this story is there is a soldier from 1927 and a doctor from the year 3797 and how they meet using time travel drugs. It all makes sense if you read it, sort of. It's a beautiful romance sci-fi. Yeah. And it's just very solid, like, uh, and it and it challenges the way you read things. So at, at one point you have to like read only the top half, then flip the book over, and then read the bottom half to see how the story began and or ended in that one issue. Uh, huge fan of this series. They finally did a very nice deluxe hardcover edition of it. Ah, uh, this is so good. I have this already, but I'm thinking about just you know dropping down some more money on this as well because it's just one of my favorite Jeff Lemire stories ever. Yeah, I, I love the idea of a hardcover edition of it. Is there bonus material in there? Let me see. Uh, this new hardcover edition features a never-before-seen never sketch gallery from Very Jeff cool. Lemire. So maybe like some uh, design work. Most likely. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, Joel, Joel says, just joined in. Don't know if you guys talked about it. Brian Michael Bendis joining DC. We, we did, did talk just talk about, about it. it. We're still kind of confused and <laughs> interested. Yeah, it's. I mean, because just you, you got to imagine like Bendis probably said like, okay, I'll sign up, but I get to write Batman or Superman or right. something big, and just you know, just think of what he did like reinventing like the Avengers, like all those Ultimate books. Yeah, he can, could he fix like characters that need to be fixed? Yeah, could be interesting. 
Legacy, an off-color no novella for you to color. This is the latest coloring book slash novel by Chuck Bolaniak of Fight Club fame and Choke fame. Uh, beautifully illustrated. <laughs> Gotta be careful opening certain pages. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's a Palinuic book, so. Yeah, awesome, awesome pages, lots to color. Even if you don't ever color it, this is a great read. Check it out. I'm also going to quickly shout out. This book Jacques is cool. De Pierpont's Heavy Metal. This is one of the, I believe, the second of the Little Book of Knowledge from IDW. Uh, the first one was Tattoos. This one. This one gives you like a lot of facts about a lot of basically the entire history of metal. Very cool. I see your man Alice that. Cooper in there. Coop's in there. I saw ACDC, Ozzy. You know, you've got uh, Re uh, Rio Dio. <laughs> you had Duran Duran's in there. Uh, David Lee Roth. Talk about some glam. Everything metal is in this book. Rammstein. I saw Sepultura in there. Everyone. I haven't even listened to Sepultura in, in so long. You've got Anvil in there. So good. Nice. Very cool. My last one, as usual, is the sidekick special of the week. So, well, what, what's up? <laughs> James says, Superman rules. Everyone else drools. <laughs> that is right. <laughs> um, so, might have remembered a little film from earlier this year, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, and the you know post credit scene yeah. of uh, Adam Warlock. Is he when is he going to show up? Well, if you're unfamiliar with that character, you can definitely check out Jim Starlin's wonderful Afro hairstyle uh, '70s epic. Now, Adam Warlock had beautiful feathered hair, right? But there's a lot of fros in here. Magnus sported a fro. Yes. So uh, this is very solid, solid stuff. If you um, never got to read any of the '70s cosmic Marvel so oh man, it's the best. It is crazy, trippy, colorful, um, afros and space clowns. I'm not gonna <laughs> tell you that drugs were involved, but if you've read uh, the Marvel story, drugs were involved. Yeah, so it's awesome. There's it's really good. There's a lot of really ins. Focused insanity. How's that? Maybe even unfocused insanity too. It's it's awesome. And Starlin just as a writer is just like a world writer, right. crazy, and like takes themes and just like makes beautiful madness out of it. Yeah, his cosmic stuff. Wow. So this is uh, collecting strange tales number one seventy eight through one eighty one. Uh, Warlock issues nine through fifteen. An Avengers annual and a Marvel two and one annual. So there's a lot packed into this book. Uh, it's usually going for $34.99. We are doing it for $10. Oh, man. Starting tomorrow, 9 a.m. at the Sidekick store. So good. Yeah. So, whew, a lot of good stuff coming out this week. It is a great week for comics. Yeah, it really is. And comic news. And comic news. Man. So, but let's talk about what's going on with us uh, here. So next Wednesday, the 15th, Donny Cates is coming in signing his first issue of the Doctor Strange series. Doctor Strange featuring Loki, Loki as the Sorcerer Supreme. Interesting. So, I'm very excited to find out more yeah. about that. And then the next week uh, that's coming out is uh, his Thanos, his first Thanos book. So that's really cool. Uh, well, he got scooped up real fast. He did, him. right? Although he was doing Marvel stuff before. Now that he's had a lot of success with Image, Marvel's like, yeah, come write some of these favorite characters of yours. Yeah, so I'm really stoked to see what he's going to be doing with that. Uh, local comic shop day is coming up. It's coming up. That's on the 18th. Of November? Yes. Dang, that so, scooted on us fast. A week and a half from now. We'll have a ton of exclusive comics, graphic novels, cool stuff. I believe there's a bandana involved. That's true. Yeah. Uh, it's all very limited quantity stuff, so you want to be here early on local comic shop day to make sure you get the stuff you want the most. And uh, added bonus on local comic shop day, Joe Pruitt, who is a, he's been in the comics industry forever. He worked on some X-Men books, worked on Cable. Uh, he's also one of the big, you know, big wigs over at Aftershock Comics. And he's going to be signing his book, Black Eyed Kids. That's one of the most popular Aftershock comics. That's how I got into Aftershock. I was just like, what's this all about? It's and creepy. It's creepy and awesome. So he's going to be here from 2 to 5 awesome. on that day. So. Get your book signed, ask them questions yeah. about the industry, his work, Aftershock, all sorts of good stuff. Yeah. 
So that's all the things I got on the top of my head. What do you got? Well, tonight we're gonna go pop on over to Outlaw Moon Games Facebook page and play some Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, we've also got a new Magic Ixalan League starting up tomorrow. So okay. If you're a newcomer to Magic, or you're learning, or you want something a nice way to start off on like a level playing field with other people, that's the best way to do that. Mm -hmm. Jump in, you just buy three packs of Ixalan, and you make a terrible deck out of it. We'll all make terrible decks out of our packs, and then we smack them against each other. And if you lose, you get to buy extra packs, and like you make your deck a little bit better. It's a pretty fun way. We meet every Wednesday night. It'll be going for four weeks. Nice. Uh, and that is most of what's going on over there. I'm grading some back issue comics. I'm actually listing some on eBay. I've got a bunch yeah. of EC comics up there right now, like Tales from the Crypt, uh, Crime Suspense Stories, uh, a lot of the New Direction ones like Valor and Psychoanalysis, which are less exciting than the really cool ones like Shock Suspense Stories, the, the new trend. Uh, and I just put up uh, Spider-Man 3. Mm. That's already got some bids. It's uh, pretty interesting. I'm really excited to see how that does. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of fun. First Dr. Octopus, right? That is correct. Oh. No. And it's not a great condition copy, <laughs> but it's the one we have. It's, so. But it's a classic. I mean, it's the first appearance of Dr. Octopus. Yeah. One of my all-time favorite villains. Classic Spidey issue. Very hard to get. Paramore of uh, May. <laughs> one time, Paramore. Yeah. yeah. I just always loved that story. There was just like... Okay, sure, they're gonna get hitched. Why not? I, I love that she she respected and admired him and he just hated that that Spider Man. Yeah. Foul creature. So good. Uh do you got anything else going on? Um yeah, that's that's it for right now. Just uh working on some back issues and uh getting them all posted and taking pictures of them and nice. doing fun stuff. Uh, if anybody's not doing anything, Saturday at 8.30, I'm playing a show at Hops and Grain Brewery. They were the guys who made that special beer for us for our 40th anniversary party. Oh, nice. Uh, so, and it's an early show. It's 8.30, you know, which I need because I'm very tired. I'm tired of playing at midnight. <laughs> or if you're afraid of going out in public in social situations, you can go play some games with us at Outlaw. True, there's that also. So. Uh, not trying to step on toes. We're just competing with each other. Yes. Who can draw the most fans? Love us. We played, we played the thing. In Dude, how was that Outpost game? Post thirty one. Oh my god, it was so good. Is it like is it a social deduction game where you're trying to figure out who the thing is, or is it like way more? In there? I mean, you you're in the outpost. You're each the characters from the movies. You're and like you're trying to determine who is the imitation, and then like there's like kind of like three main rounds if you survive long enough. And like at the end of every round, someone else could also be infected. Oh, weird. It's intense. They were shouting, there was pointing, there was <laughs> yelling. I, uh, it feels just like the movie. You force blood tests. Oh, it's so good. Nice. Uh, it was so good. I had so much fun playing it that I immediately like ordered like a lot more. Nice. So we will have plenty of that game in the coming uh, weeks, a couple weeks. So maybe next week, sometime soon. Cool. Uh, it's awesome. It's great. Highly recommended. Come, come play the game. Buy the game. Uh, yeah. Live the thing. <laughs> I was McCready both games we played. Yeah. And I insisted, like McCready's human. You saw the movie. They're like that's not. You can't. It's yeah. Not right. Human both times. Oh man. You just McCready them. We won the first game, and then one of the imitations tricked us into not into. into we you have to at the end you have to, if you survive you have to pick like five players to escape mm -hmm. on the helicopter and if any of them are the imitation the imitations win. Oh man! And that that uh, that second game the imitation fooled us. Oh man! It was oh. intense. We were doing so good. It was so. Uh, <laughs> it was. I was nerding out about it for like all night long. Excellent. The game was so good. Well. uh... If you, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm thinking about all the stuff that we have going on. So, uh, if you guys want, you can follow me at SuperTyDenton1. You can follow you at Comic Book Brando. You can follow both of us at Austin Books, and we'll see you tomorrow. It's going to be a huge day. New comic book. And day. a huge month. We got a lot going on. So, come on down and visit us. Awkward part. Yeah.